Nova Scotia, Latin for New Scotland. French, Nouvelle Ecosse, Scottish Gaelic, Alba Nuad is one of Canada's three maritime provinces, and one of the four provinces that form Atlantic Canada. Its provincial capital is Halifax. Nova Scotia is the second smallest of Canada's ten provinces, with an area of 55,284 square kilometres 21,300 square miles, including Cape Breton and another 3,800 coastal islands. As of 2016, the population was 923,598. Nova Scotia is Canada's second most densely populated province, after Prince Edward Island, with 17.4 inhabitants per square kilometre 45 per square miles. Etymology Nova Scotia means New Scotland in Latin and is the recognized English language name for the province. In both French and Scottish Gaelic, the province is directly translated as New Scotland, French, Nouvelle Ecosse, Gaelic, Alba Nuad. In general, Romance and Slavic languages use a direct translation of New Scotland, while most other languages use direct transliterations of the Latin, English name. The province was first named in the 1621 Royal Charter granting to Sir William Alexander in 1632 the right to settle lands including modern Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Island, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick and the Gaspé Peninsula. Geography Nova Scotia is Canada's smallest province in area after Prince Edward Island. The province's mainland is the Nova Scotia Peninsula surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, including numerous bays and estuaries. Nowhere in Nova Scotia is more than 67 kilometers 42 miles from the ocean. Cape Breton Island, a large island to the northeast of the Nova Scotia mainland, is also part of the province, as is Sable Island, a small island notorious for its shipwrecks, approximately 175 kilometers 110 miles from the province's southern coast. Nova Scotia has many ancient fossil-bearing rock formations. These formations are particularly rich on the Bay of Fundy's shores. Blue Beach near Hansport, Joggin's Fossil Cliffs, on the Bay of Fundy's shores, has yielded an abundance of Carboniferous Age fossils. Wasson's Bluff, near the town of Persboro, has yielded both Triassic and Jurassic Age fossils. The province contains 5,400 lakes. Topic. Climate. Nova Scotia lies in the mid-temperate zone and, although the province is almost surrounded by water, the climate is closer to continental climate rather than maritime. The winter and summer temperature extremes of the continental climate are moderated by the ocean. However, winters are cold enough to be classified as continental—still being nearer the freezing point than inland areas to the west. The Nova Scotian climate is in many ways similar to the central Baltic Sea coast in northern Europe, only wetter and snowier. This is true in spite of Nova Scotia's being some 15 parallels south. Areas not on the Atlantic coast experience warmer summers more typical of inland areas, and winter lows a little colder. Described on the provincial vehicle license plate as Canada's ocean playground, Nova Scotia is surrounded by four major bodies of water, the Gulf of St. Lawrence to the north, the Bay of Fundy to the west, the Gulf of Maine to the southwest, and Atlantic Ocean to the east. History Topic. Overview The province includes regions of the Mi'kmaq nation of Mi'kma'ki The Mi'kmaq people inhabited Nova Scotia at the time the first European colonists arrived. In 1605, French colonists established the first permanent European settlement in the future Canada and the first north of Florida at Port Royal, founding what would become known as Acadia. The British conquest of Acadia took place in 1710. The Treaty of Utrecht in 1713 formally recognized this and returned Cape Breton Island Ile Royale to the French. Present-day New Brunswick then still formed a part of the French colony of Acadia. Immediately after the capture of Port Royal in 1710, Francis Nicholson announced it would be renamed Annapolis Royal in honor of Queen Anne. In 1749, the capital of Nova Scotia moved from Annapolis Royal to the newly established Halifax. 
In 1755 the vast majority of the French population the Acadians was forcibly removed in the expulsion of the Acadians. New England planters arrived between 1759 and 1768 to replace them. In 1763, most of Acadia, Cape Breton Island, St. John's Island, now Prince Edward Island, and New Brunswick became part of Nova Scotia. In 1769, St. John's Island became a separate colony. Nova Scotia included present-day New Brunswick until that province's establishment in 1784, after the arrival of United Empire Loyalists. In 1867, Nova Scotia became one of the four founding provinces of the Canadian Confederation. 17th and 18th centuries The warfare on Nova Scotian soil during the 17th and 18th centuries significantly influenced the history of Nova Scotia. The Mi'kmaq had lived in Nova Scotia for centuries. The French arrived in 1604, and Catholic Mi'kmaq and Acadians formed the majority of the population of the colony for the next 150 years. During the first 80 years the French and Acadians lived in Nova Scotia, nine significant military clashes took place as the English and Scottish later British, Dutch and French fought for possession of the area. These encounters happened at Port Royal, St. John, Cap de Sable present-day Port La Tour, Nova Scotia, Gemseg 1674 and 1758 and Boleyn 1629. The Acadian Civil War took place from 1640 to 1645. Beginning with King William's War in 1688, six wars took place in Nova Scotia before the British defeated the French and ultimately expelled much of their population and made peace with the Mi'kmaq. King William's War 1688-1697 Queen Anne's War 1702-1713 Father Rail's War 1722-1725 King George's War 1744-1748 Father Le Loutre's War 1749-1755 The Seven Years' War, also called the French and Indian War 1754-1763 The battles during these wars took place primarily Port Royal, St. John, Canso, Chinecto, Dartmouth 1751, Lunenburg 1756 and Grand Pré. Despite the British conquest of Acadia in 1710, Nova Scotia remained primarily occupied by Catholic Acadians and Mi'kmaq, who confined British forces to Annapolis and to Canso. The Mi'kmaq signed a series of peace and friendship treaties with Great Britain, beginning after Father Rail's War 1725. In 1725, the British signed a treaty or agreement with the Mi'kmaq, but the authorities have often disputed its definition of the rights of the Mi'kmaq to hunt and fish on their lands. A generation later, Father Le Loutre's war began when Edward Cornwallis arrived to establish Halifax with 13 transports on June 21, 1749. A general court, made up of the governor and the council, was the highest court in the colony at the time. Jonathan Belcher was sworn in as Chief Justice of the Nova Scotia Supreme Court on October 21, 1754. The first legislative assembly in Halifax, under the governorship of Charles Lawrence, met on October 2, 1758. During the French and Indian War of 1754–63 the North American theatre of the Seven Years' War of 1756–1763, the British deported the Acadians and recruited New England planters to resettle the colony. The 75-year period of war ended with the burial of the hatchet ceremony between the British and the Mi'kmaq after the war, some Acadians were allowed to return and the British made treaties with the Mi'kmaq. The American Revolution 1775 had a significant impact on shaping Nova Scotia. Initially, Nova Scotia, the 14th American colony, as some called it, displayed ambivalence over whether the colony should join the more southern colonies in their defiance of Britain, and rebellion flared at the Battle of Fort Cumberland 1776 and at the Siege of St. John 1777. Throughout the war, American privateers devastated the maritime economy by capturing ships and looting almost every community outside of Halifax. These American raids alienated many sympathetic or neutral Nova Scotians into supporting the British. By the end of the war Nova Scotia had outfitted a number of privateers to attack American shipping. 
British military forces based at Halifax succeeded in preventing American support for rebels in Nova Scotia and deterred any invasion of Nova Scotia. However the British Navy failed to establish naval supremacy. While the British captured many American privateers in battles such as the Naval Battle off Halifax 1782, many more continued attacks on shipping and settlements until the final months of the war. The Royal Navy struggled to maintain British supply lines, defending convoys from American and French attacks as in the fiercely fought convoy battle, the Naval Battle off Cape Breton 1781. After the Thirteen Colonies and their French allies forced the British forces to surrender 1781, approximately 33,000 Loyalists the King's Loyal Americans, allowed to place United Empire Loyalist after their names settled in Nova Scotia 14,000 of them in what became New Brunswick on lands granted by the Crown as some compensation for their losses. The British administration divided Nova Scotia and carved out the present-day province of New Brunswick in 1784. The Loyalist exodus created new communities across Nova Scotia, including Shelburne, which briefly became one of the larger British settlements in North America, and infused Nova Scotia with additional capital and skills. However the migration also caused political tensions between Loyalist leaders and the leaders of the existing New England planters settlement. The Loyalist influx also pushed Nova Scotia's Mi'kmaq people to the margins as Loyalist land grants encroached on ill-defined native lands. As part of the Loyalist migration, about 3,000 black Loyalists arrived, they founded the largest free black settlement in North America at Birchtown, near Shelburne. However, unfair treatment and harsh conditions caused about one-third of the black Loyalists to resettle in Sierra Leone in 1792, where they founded Freetown and became known in Africa as the Nova Scotian settlers. 19th century During the War of 1812, Nova Scotia's contribution to the British war effort involved communities either purchasing or building various privateer ships to attack U.S. vessels. Perhaps the most dramatic moment in the war for Nova Scotia occurred when HMS Shannon escorted the captured American frigate USS Chesapeake into Halifax Harbor 1813. Many of the U.S. prisoners were kept at Deadman's Island, Halifax. During this century, Nova Scotia became the first colony in British North America and in the British Empire to achieve responsible government in January to February 1848 and become self-governing through the efforts of Joseph Howe. Nova Scotia had established representative government in 1758, an achievement later commemorated by the erection of the Dingle Tower in 1908. Nova Scotians fought in the Crimean War of 1853-1856. The Wellsford Parker Monument in Halifax is the second oldest war monument in Canada 1860 and the only Crimean War Monument in North America. It commemorates the 1854–55 Siege of Sevastopol. Thousands of Nova Scotians fought in the American Civil War 1861 primarily on behalf of the North. The British Empire including Nova Scotia declared itself neutral in the conflict. As a result, Britain and Nova Scotia continued to trade with both the South and the North. Nova Scotia's economy boomed during the Civil War. Soon after the American Civil War, pro-Canadian Confederation Premier Charles Tupper led Nova Scotia into the Canadian Confederation on July 1, 1867, along with New Brunswick and the Province of Canada. The Anti-Confederation Party was led by Joseph Howe. Almost three months later, in the election of September 18, 1867, the Anti-Confederation Party won 18 out of 19 federal seats, and 36 out of 38 seats in the provincial legislature. Nova Scotia became a world leader in both building and owning wooden sailing ships in the second half of the 19th century. Nova Scotia produced internationally recognized shipbuilders Donald McKay and William Dawson Lawrence. The fame Nova Scotia achieved from sailors was assured when Joshua Slocum became the first man to sail single-handedly around the world 1895. International attention continued into the following century with the many racing victories of the Bluenose schooner. Nova Scotia was also the birthplace and home of Samuel Cunard, a British shipping magnate born at Halifax, Nova Scotia who founded the Cunard Line. 
Throughout the 19th century, numerous businesses developed in Nova Scotia became of pan Canadian and international importance. The Star Manufacturing Company, first skate manufacturer in Canada, the Bank of Nova Scotia, Cunard Line, Alexander Keith's Brewery, Morse's Tea Company, first tea company in Canada, among others. Early in the 20th century, Sobeys was established, as was Maritime Life. Topic: Demography. Topic. Population since 1851 Topic. Counties by population A county boundaries contiguous with those of the Cape Breton Regional Municipality, B county boundaries contiguous with those of the Halifax Regional Municipality, C county boundaries contiguous with those of the Region of Queen's Municipality. Topic. Ethnic origins According to the 2006 Canadian census the largest ethnic group in Nova Scotia is Scottish 31.9%, followed by English 31.8%, Irish 21.6%, French 17.9%, German 11.3%, Aboriginal origin 5.3%, Dutch 4.1%, Black Canadians 2.8%, Welsh 1.9%, Italian 1.5%, and Scandinavian 1.4%, 40.9% percent of respondents identified their ethnicity as Canadian. Nova Scotia has a long history of social justice work to address issues such as racism and sexism within its borders. The Nova Scotia Legislature was the third in Canada to pass human rights legislation 1963. The Nova Scotia Human Rights Commission was established in 1967. Topic. Language. The 2011 Canadian census showed a population of 921,727. Of the 904,285 singular responses to the census question concerning mother tongue the most commonly reported languages were Figures shown are for the number of single language responses and the percentage of total single language responses. Nova Scotia is home to the largest Scottish Gaelic speaking community outside of Scotland, with a small number of native speakers in Pictou County, Antigonish County, and Cape Breton Island, and the language is taught in a number of secondary schools throughout the province. In 2018, the government launched a new Gaelic vehicle license plate to raise awareness of the language and help fund Gaelic language and culture initiatives. They estimated that there were 2,000 Gaelic speakers in the province. Topic religion In 1871, the largest religious denominations were Protestant with 103,500 Roman Catholic with 102,000 Baptist with 73,295 Anglican with 55,124 Methodist with 40,748 Lutheran with 4,958 and Congregationalist with 2,000 2,538 0.65%. According to the 2001 census, the largest denominations by number of adherents were the Roman Catholic Church with 327,940 37%, the United Church of Canada with 142,520 17%, and the Anglican Church of Canada with 120,315 13%. There are also 8,505 0.9% Muslims according to 2011 census. Topic economy Nova Scotia's per capita GDP in 2010 was $38,475, significantly lower than the national average per capita GDP of $47,605 and a little more than half of Canada's richest province, Alberta. GDP growth has lagged behind the rest of the country for at least the past decade. Nova Scotia's traditionally resource-based economy has diversified in recent decades. The rise of Nova Scotia as a viable jurisdiction in North America, historically, was driven by the ready availability of natural resources, especially the fish stocks off the Scotian shelf. The fishery was a pillar of the economy since its development as part of New France in the 17th century, however, the fishery suffered a sharp decline due to overfishing in the late 20th century. 
The collapse of the COD stocks and the closure of this sector resulted in a loss of approximately 20,000 jobs in 1992. Other sectors in the province were also hit hard, particularly during the last two decades. Coal mining in Cape Breton and northern mainland Nova Scotia has virtually ceased, and a large steel mill in Sydney closed during the 1990s. More recently, the high value of the Canadian dollar relative to the US dollar has hurt the forestry industry, leading to the shutdown of a long-running pulp and paper mill near Liverpool. Mining, especially of gypsum and salt and to a lesser extent silica, peat and barite, is also a significant sector. Since 1991, offshore oil and gas has become an important part of the economy, although production and revenue are now declining. Agriculture remains an important sector in the province, particularly in the Annapolis Valley. Nova Scotia's defense and aerospace sector generates approximately $500 million in revenues and contributes about $1.5 billion to the provincial economy each year. To date, 40% of Canada's military assets reside in Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia has the fourth largest film industry in Canada hosting over 100 productions yearly, more than half of which are the products of international film and television producers. In 2015, the government of Nova Scotia eliminated tax credits to film production in the province, jeopardizing the industry given most other jurisdictions continue to offer such credits. The Nova Scotia tourism industry includes more than 6,500 direct businesses, supporting nearly 40,000 jobs. 200,000 cruise ship passengers from around the world flow through the port of Halifax, Nova Scotia each year. This industry contributes approximately $1.3 billion annually to the economy. The province also boasts a rapidly developing information and communication technology sector which consists of over 500 companies, and employs roughly 15,000 people. In 2006, the manufacturing sector brought in over $2.6 billion in chained GDP, the largest output of any industrial sector in Nova Scotia. Michelin remains by far the largest single employer in this sector, operating three production plants in the province. As of 2012, the median family income in Nova Scotia was $67,910, below the national average of $74,540. In Halifax, the figure rises to $80,490. The province is the world's largest exporter of Christmas trees, lobster, gypsum, and wild berries. Its export value of fish exceeds $1 billion, and fish products are received by 90 countries around the world. Nevertheless, the province's imports far exceed its exports. While these numbers were roughly equal from 1992 until 2004, since that time the trade deficit has ballooned. In 2012, exports from Nova Scotia were 12.1% of provincial GDP, while imports were 22.6%. <laughs> Government, law and politics Nova Scotia is ordered by a parliamentary government within the construct of constitutional monarchy. The monarchy in Nova Scotia is the foundation of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. The sovereign is Queen Elizabeth II, who also serves as head of state of 15 other Commonwealth countries, each of Canada's nine other provinces, and the Canadian federal realm, and resides predominantly in the United Kingdom. As such, the Queen's representative, the Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia at present Arthur Joseph LeBlanc, carries out most of the royal duties in Nova Scotia. In 1937, Everett Farmer was the last person hanged for murder in Nova Scotia. The direct participation of the royal and viceroyal figures in any of these areas of governance is limited, though, in practice, their use of the executive powers is directed by the Executive Council, a committee of ministers of the Crown responsible to the unicameral, elected House of Assembly and chosen and headed by the Premier of Nova Scotia presently Stephen McNeil, the head of government. To ensure the stability of government, the lieutenant governor will usually appoint as premier the person who is the current leader of the political party that can obtain the confidence of a plurality in the House of Assembly. The leader of the party with the second most seats usually becomes the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition presently Jamie Bailey and is part of an adversarial parliamentary system intended to keep the government in check. Each of the 51 members of the Legislative Assembly in the House of Assembly is elected by single-member plurality in an electoral district or riding. General elections must be called by the lieutenant governor on the advice of the premier, or may be triggered by the government losing a confidence vote in the House. 
There are three dominant political parties in Nova Scotia, the Liberal Party, the New Democratic Party, and the Progressive Conservative Party. The other two registered parties are the Green Party of Nova Scotia and the Atlantica Party, neither of which has a seat in the House of Assembly. The province's revenue comes mainly from the taxation of personal and corporate income, although taxes on tobacco and alcohol, its stake in the Atlantic Lottery Corporation, and oil and gas royalties are also significant. In 2006–07, the province passed a budget of $6.9 billion, with a projected $72 million surplus. Federal equalization payments account for $1.385 billion, or 20.07% of the provincial revenue. The province participates in the HST, a blended sales tax collected by the federal government using the GST tax system. Nova Scotia no longer has any incorporated cities, they were amalgamated into regional municipalities in 1996. Culture Fine arts Nova Scotia has long been a centre for artistic and cultural excellence. The capital, Halifax, hosts institutions such as Nova Scotia College of Art and Design University, Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, Neptune Theatre, Dalhousie Arts Centre, Two Planks and a Passion Theatre, Ship's Company Theatre and the Symphony Nova Scotia. The province is home to avant-garde visual art and traditional crafting, writing and publishing and a film industry. Much of the historic public art sculptures in the province were made by New York sculptor J. Massey Rind as well as Canadian sculptors Hamilton McCarthy, George Hill, Emmanuel Hahn and Louis-Philippe Hebert. Some of this public art was also created by Nova Scotian John Wilson sculptor. Nova Scotian George Lang was a stone sculptor who also built many landmark buildings in the province, including the Wellsford Parker Monument. Two valuable sculptures, monuments in the province are in St. Paul's Church Halifax, one by John Gibson for Richard John Uniac, Jr. and another monument by Sir Francis Leggett Chantry for Amelia Ann Smith. Both Gibson and Chantry were famous British sculptors during the Victorian era and have numerous sculptures in the Tate, Museum of Fine Arts, Boston and Westminster Abbey. Some of the province's greatest painters were William Valentine, Maria Morris, Jack L. Gray, Mabel Killiam Day, Ernest Lawson, Francis Bannerman, Alex Colville, Tom Forstall and ship portrait artist John O'Brien. Some of most notable artists whose works have been acquired by Nova Scotia are British artist Joshua Reynolds Collection of Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, William Gush and William J. Weaver both have works in Province House, Robert Field Government House, as well as leading American artists Benjamin West self-portrait in the Halifax Club, portrait of Chief Justice in Nova Scotia Supreme Court, John Singleton Copley, Robert Fecke, and Robert Field the latter three have works in the Uniac Estate. Two famous Nova Scotian photographers are Wallace R. McCaskill and Sherman Hines. Three of the most accomplished illustrators were George Wiley Hutchinson, Bob Chambers cartoonist, and Donald A. McKay. Renowned American artists like sculptor Richard Serra, composer Philip Glass and abstract painter John Beardman spent part of the year in Nova Scotia. Topic. Film and television Nova Scotia has produced numerous film actors. Academy Award nominee Ellen Page Juno, Inception, was born in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Five-time Academy Award nominee Arthur Kennedy Lawrence of Arabia, High Sierra, called Nova Scotia his home, and two-time Golden Globe winner Donald Sutherland Mash, Ordinary People, spent most of his youth in the province. Other actors include John Paul Tremblay, Rob Wells, Mike Smith and John Dunsworth of Trailer Park Boys and actress Joanne Kelly of Warehouse 13. Nova Scotia has also produced numerous film directors such as Tom Fitzgerald The Hanging Garden, Daniel Petrie Resurrection, Academy Award nominee and Acadian film director Phil Camo's multiple award-winning local story Le Secret de Jérôme. Nova Scotian stories are the subject of numerous feature films, Margaret's Museum starring Helena Bonham Carter, The Bay Boy directed by Daniel Petrie and starring Kiefer Sutherland, New Waterford Girl, The Story of Adele H., The Story of Unrequited Love of Adele Hugo, and two films of Evangeline one starring Miriam Cooper and another starring Dolores Del Rio. There is a significant film industry in Nova Scotia. 
Feature filmmaking began in Canada with Evangeline 1913, made by Canadian Bioscope Company in Halifax, which released six films before it closed. The film has since been lost. Some of the award-winning feature films made in the province are Titanic starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, The Shipping News starring Kevin Spacey and Julianne Moore, K-19, The Widowmaker starring Harrison Ford and Liam Neeson and Amelia starring Hilary Swank, Richard Gere and Ewan McGregor. Nova Scotia has also produced numerous television series, This Hour Has 22 Minutes, Don Messer's Jubilee, Black Harbor, Haven, Trailer Park Boys, Mr. D, Call Me Fitz, and Theodore Tugboat. The Jesse Stone film series on CBS starring Tom Selleck is also routinely produced in the province. Topic literature There are numerous Nova Scotian authors who have achieved international fame, Thomas Chandler Halliburton The Clockmaker, Alistair MacLeod No Great Mischief, Margaret Marshall Saunders Beautiful Joe, Lawrence B. Dakin Marco Polo, and Joshua Slocum Sailing Alone Around the World. Other authors include Johanna Skibsrid, The Sentimentalists, Alden Nowlin, Bread, Wine and Salt, George Eliot Clark, Execution Poems, Leslie Choice, Nova Scotia, Shaped by the Sea, Thomas Rattle, Halifax, Warden of the North, Donna Morrissey, Kitts Law, Frank Parker Day, Rockbound. Nova Scotia has also been the subject of numerous literary books. Some of the international bestsellers are, Last Man Out, The Story of the Springhill Mining Disaster by Melissa Fay Green, Curse of the Narrows, The Halifax Explosion 1917 by Laura MacDonald, In the Village short story by Pulitzer Prize-winning author Elizabeth Bishop, and National Book Critics Circle Award winner Rough Crossings by Simon Shama. Other authors who have written novels about Nova Scotian stories include, Lyndon McIntyre The Bishop's Man, Hugh McLennan Barometer Rising, Rebecca McNutt Mandy and Electo, Ernest Buckler The Valley and the Mountain, Archibald McMechan Red Snow on Grand Pre, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Long Poem Evangeline, Lawrence Hill The Book of Negroes and John Mac Farragher Great and Nobel Scheme. Topic music Nova Scotia has produced numerous musicians. The Grammy Award winners include Denny Doherty from the Mamas and the Papas, Anne Murray, and Sarah McLaughlin. Other musicians include country singer Hank Snow, country singer George Canyon, jazz singer Holly Cole, opera singers Portia White and Barbara Hannigan, multi-Juno Award-nominated rapper Classified, Rita McNeil, Matt Mays, Sloan, Feist, Todd Fancy, The Rankin Family, April Wine, Buck 65, Joel Plaskett, Grand Derangement, and country music singer Drake Jensen. There are numerous songs written about Nova Scotia, The Ballad of Springhill written by Peggy Seeger and performed by Irish folk singer Luke Kelly a member of the Dubliners, U2, numerous songs by Stan Rogers including Blue Nose, The Genie C mentions Little Dover, N.S., Barrett's Privateers, Giant, and The Rotten Hills, Farewell to Nova Scotia traditional, Blue Nose Stompin' Tom Connors, She's Called Nova Scotia by Rita McNeil, Cape Breton by David Miles, Acadian Driftwood by Robbie Robertson, Acadie by Daniel Lanois, and My Nova Scotia Home by Hank Snow. Nova Scotia has also produced some significant songwriters such as Grammy Award-winning Gordy Sampson. Sampson has written songs for Carrie Underwood, Jesus, Take the Wheel, Just a Dream, Get Out of This Town, Martina McBride, If I Had Your Name, You're Not Leaving Me, Leanne Rimes, Long Night, Save Myself, and George Canyon, My Name. Another successful Nova Scotia songwriter was Hank Snow whose songs have been recorded by the Rolling Stones, Elvis Presley, and Johnny Cash. Music producer Brian Ahern is a Nova Scotian. He got his start by being music director for CBC Television's Sing Along Jubilee. He later produced 12 albums for Anne Murray, Snowbird, Danny's Song, and You Won't See Me. Eleven albums for Emmylou Harris whom he married at his home in Halifax on January 9, 1977. He also produced discs for Johnny Cash, George Jones, Roy Orbison, Glenn Campbell, Don Williams, Jesse Winchester and Linda Ronstadt. Another noted writer is Cape Bretoner Leon Dubinsky, who wrote the anthem, Rise Again, among many other songs performed by various Canadian artists. Sports Sport is an important part of Nova Scotia culture. There are numerous semi-pro, university and amateur sports teams, for example, the Halifax Mooseheads, 2013 Canadian Hockey League Memorial Cup champions, and the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles, both of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. 
The Halifax Hurricanes of the National Basketball League of Canada is another team that calls Nova Scotia home, and were 2016 league champions. The Nova Scotia Open is a professional golf tournament on the Web.com Tour since 2014. The province has also produced numerous athletes such as Sidney Crosby ice hockey, Nathan McKinnon ice hockey, Brad Marchand ice hockey, Colleen Jones curling, Al McInnes ice hockey, TJ Grant mixed martial arts, Rocky Johnson wrestling, and father of Dwayne the Rock Johnson, George Dixon boxing, and Kirk Johnson boxing. The achievements of Nova Scotian athletes are presented at the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame. Topic. Cuisine The cuisine of Nova Scotia is typically Canadian with an emphasis on local seafood. One endemic dish in the sense of peculiar to and originating from is the Halifax Donair, a distant variant of the Donner kebab prepared using thinly sliced beef meatloaf and a sweet condensed milk sauce. As well, hodge podge, a creamy soup of fresh baby vegetables, is native to Nova Scotia. The province is also known for blueberry grunt. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Events and festivals. There are a number of festivals and cultural events that are recurring in Nova Scotia or notable in its history. The following is an incomplete list of festivals and other cultural gatherings in the province. Topic. Tourism Nova Scotia's tourism industry showcases Nova Scotia's culture, scenery and coastline. Nova Scotia has many museums reflecting its ethnic heritage, including the Glooscap Heritage Center, Grand Pre National Historic Site, Hector Heritage Key and the Black Cultural Center for Nova Scotia. Others museums tell the story of its working history, such as the Cape Breton Miners Museum, and the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. Nova Scotia is home to several internationally renowned musicians and there are visitor centers in the home towns of Hank Snow, Rita McNeil, and Anne Murray Center. There are also numerous music and cultural festivals such as the Stan Rogers Folk Festival, Celtic Colors, the Nova Scotia Gaelic Mod, Royal Nova Scotia International Tattoo, the Atlantic Film Festival and the Atlantic Fringe Festival. The province has 87 National Historic Sites of Canada, including the habitation at Port Royal, the fortress of Loisburg and Citadel Hill Fort George in Halifax. Nova Scotia has two national parks, Kejimkajik and Cape Breton Highlands, and many other protected areas. The Bay of Fundy has the highest tidal range in the world, and the iconic Peggy's Cove is internationally recognized and receives 600,000 plus visitors a year. Acadian Skies and Micmac Lands is a starlight reserve in southwestern Nova Scotia. It is the first certified UNESCO Starlight Tourist Destination. Starlight tourist destinations are locations that offer conditions for observations of stars which are protected from light pollution. Cruise ships pay regular visits to the province. In 2010, Halifax received 261,000 passengers and Sydney 69,000. A 2008 Nova Scotia tourism campaign included advertising a fictional mobile phone called Pomegranate and establishing website, which after reading about new phone, redirected to tourism info about region. Topic. Education The Minister of Education is responsible for the administration and delivery of education, as defined by the Education Act and other acts relating to colleges, universities and private schools. The powers of the Minister and the Department of Education are defined by the ministerial regulations and constrained by the Governor-in-Council regulations. Nova Scotia has more than 450 public schools for children. The public system offers primary to grade 12. There are also private schools in the province. Public education is administered by seven regional school boards, responsible primarily for English instruction and French immersion, and also province-wide by the Conseil scolaire Acadien Provincial, which administers French instruction to students for whom the primary language is French. The Nova Scotia Community College system has 13 campuses around the province. The community college, with its focus on training and education, was established in 1988 by amalgamating the province's former vocational schools. 
In addition to its community college system the province has ten universities, including Dalhousie University, University of King's College, St. Mary's University, Mount St. Vincent University, NSCAD University, Acadia University, Université St. Anne, St. Francis Xavier University, Cape Breton University and the Atlantic School of Theology. There are also more than 90 registered private commercial colleges in Nova Scotia. See also Outline of Nova Scotia Index of Nova Scotia-related articles Acadiensis, scholarly history journal covering Atlantic Canada Bibliography of Nova Scotia Gypsum flora of Nova Scotia Scotia, California named after Nova Scotia Topic. Notes Topic. Bibliography Topic. External links Nova Scotia Encyclopædia Britannica. 19 11th ed. 1911. pp. 830–832. Government of Nova Scotia Nova Scotia at Curlie